अनंत संसार समुद्र तार नौकायिताभ्या गुरु भक्तिदाभ्या वैराग्य साम्राज्यद पूजनाभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्या सर्वचैतन्यूपाता आद्या विद्या धीम बुद्धि या न प्रचोदया अखिल जगन्मातो तमसा तापे न आकुला नस्मागृणातुकंपा सुधारद्रया हसीतचंद्रिकया बोलो जगन माता की जय बोलो सदगुरुनाथ महाराज की जय द इन्वोकेशन वी डू इन द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द सेशन इट माइट सीम लाइक अ फ्यू लाइन्स ऑफ संस्कृत हियर एंड देयर डजेंट मैटर हु इज इन्वोकिंग बट द इन्वोकेशन इट सेल्फ इज सो पावरफुल it truly draws the energy of the master it truly draws the energy of the divine mother because the invocation is true because the invocation prayers were given by rishis sages who were drishtas or seers of the truth everything uttered by them is the ultimate truth so although the invocation may seem like some sanskrit shlokas they actually in reality do attract or invoke the energy of the master the energy of the divine mother hence it is not important who is invoking it could be you me or anyone else that is not important the invocation itself the the act of invocation itself is so true continuing on with our bhakti series narad rishi has very beautifully laid out what bhakti is how we need to build faith moment to moment in our daily lives and how that let go of this compulsive nature of the mind slowly helps us realize the vastness the expansive true nature of our being and then he talked about excessive karma that we take on and then he says before you take on any new karma ask yourself is this going to bring me closer to para bhakti is this is is this act inculcating this act in my daily life or today or at this moment will it bring me closer to the presence of the ist within or will it make me forget the presence of the ist within and then he says if it is something that is going to take us away from the remembrance or from the awareness of the presence of the ist within be indifferent to such karma but if that karma is going to bring us in union with the presence of the ist within be 
have ananyata bhav towards it saying i have to do this ananyata i have to do, do this for my ishq so giving us a very clear cut guideline how to choose actions in our daily lives so that we are left with enough energy and enough time to perform to perform actions that will help us bring closer and closer to the presence of the ishq within so discussing along the same lines he now goes on to describe the expressions of bhakti bhakti whether expressed by a siddh or a sadhak the expression might look the same but the the point from where the the actions or the expressions emerge are very different for a sadhak the expressions of bhakti are supposed to lead him to that amrita swarup prema swarup the siddh on the other hand also expresses outwardly his bhakti and that's the shastra achar the guru is a siddh yet he expresses his devotion outwardly knowing and realizing very well the presence of the the ishq within he still expresses his devotion outwardly for the sake of the followers the disciples because as lord krishna says yad yad acharati shreshtah the way siddh purush behaves his behavior is watched by many and they they tend to copy his behavior hence a siddh has a very huge responsibility on his shoulders for his behavior to be in accordance with the shastras having said that he describes a few expressions of para bhakti and then he quotes various rishis who have validated that as one of the valid expressions of bhakti for example he quotes vyas ji maharaj and says according to vyas rishi veda vyas according to veda vyas the expression of bhakti the outward expression of bhakti is extreme attachment to puja adi adi as in etc etc to to things like puja etc and that etc includes puja upasana stotra stuti dhyan tap chanting jap so ved vyas ji in his opinion he says a para bhakt or someone wanting to have to have para bhakti will have extreme amount of attachment uncontrollable attachment towards puja adi or will have will run uncontrollably towards upasana upasana means up asan asan is to sit up is to sit close upasana is any means we take up to be close to our ishq which could be puja outward puja which abhishek or deepak agarbatti the the five types of upachar or the 16 type of upachar it could be japa of the holy names it could be meditation so all of these things that we do let's say in the puja room vyas ji maharaj says that a person who is already attained the siddha avastha in bhakti will be extremely eager to perform his pujas before he became a siddh as a sadhak he was doing it because he wanted para bhakti 
he wanted that para bhakti and he knew and that is where shraddha is shraddha is to have full faith in the shastra shastra being the vedas or guru vakya to have full faith is shradh uh, shraddha so to have full faith in the shastra vakya having that shraddha in his guru's words and in the vedas vedas being the very breath of parmatma guru ne sikhai sat ki sadhana guru ne sikhai sat ki sadhana jap tap nishtha nityopasana jap tap nishtha nityopasana guru hi ishwar guru hi ram guru hi ishwar guru hi ram guru charano mein charo dham man bhavan mero sat guru गुरु चरणों में चारों धाम गुरु ने सिखाई सत की साधना बिफोर द गुरु वी डेंट इवन नो गॉड वी न्यू गॉड एज अ ट्रेड यू वॉन्ट समथिंग यू रश टू गॉड आफ्टर यू गेट वॉट यू गॉड यू फॉर गेट गॉड so we had a transactional relationship with god it is only by the grace of the guru love divine love for parmatma for your ishq develops ram krishna parmahans offering the beautiful mandar pushp hibiscus flowers to ma kali he would adorn her with hibiscus flowers and while offering these flowers automatically he would start putting these flowers on himself because that is tanmay avastha wherein your whole being becomes one with your ishq that avastha is hard for us to understand and just because he did it if we do it that's pretense but nitya upasana wherein every day we take out some time to sit by our ishq in a formal setting we could also say oh the ishq is within me but the problem with that is the ishq has become you is you and it is the ishq is so close the divine mother is so so close it's like holding a mirror so close to the face you can't see your own face there has to be a little distance created to be able to admire your own self and that creating distance is upasana wherein you speak to the ishq within and you say you're too close to me i want to become too so i may worship you so i may love you so i may express the love that's overflowing within me out unto you and the puja room becomes or the the puja place becomes that place wherein you willfully create that distance with your ishq you create that distance and then when you say avahayami that avahayami initially would be just a mantra avahayami arpayami tarpayami but then now knowing with dridha nischay it starts with dridha nischay that yes my divine is within me my divine exists yes the divine mother exists she is within me 
and when I say avahayami, the bhav that that overflows from within, saying yes, avahayami, I am inviting you from within, O oh Divine Mother, come into this vigra. So I may admire you, I may love you, because all I know is an outward expression of love. Being in this earthly realm, if I feel angry towards someone, I want to express it. If I feel love towards someone, I want to express it. And because my consciousness is still in the earthly realm, Mother, I want to express my love to you. Hence, I invite you. I invite you in this Vigraha. So when that Avahayami happens, for a sa sincere sadhak who truly wants Parabhakti, the Aarti, the, not the Aarti that we do, that is, I'm talking about the Pida, the suffering or the pain with which a Parabhakti, a Bhakt who wants Parabhakti invokes the Divine Mother in the picture or the Vigraha is different than just doing Puja and Avahayami for some transactional purposes. So when a Parabhakt or a Bhakt who wants Parabhakti invokes the Divine Mother with a Dridha Nishcha, with firm determination that yes, Mother comes every time I invoke her. Because this is what the Shastra says, this is what the Ved says, this is what Sri Krishna says. Saying, if anyone calls me, I come right away. With a sincere heart. And that sincerity comes from Dridha Nishche, Or a firm faith, firm determination that yes, I am going to call her and she is here. At that point, it's very, very important to drop the mind, the questioning mind. Saying, is she really here? Has she come? And when that question arises, that union never happens. Because you create a wall, a concrete wall between you and your isht. Bhakti is a personal affair. It, is, it all depends on how, how much you believe in your isht. If I call the Divine Mother, I know for a fact she comes. Is that kind of Dridha Nishche we are talking about. So this Upasana that we do by taking out the time and energy when we sit and we do Avahyami, when we invite our Isht who is within us, seated in the lotus of our heart, to come into the picture or the vigraha, that bhav, that bhav is exactly the same bhav as that of a siddha. Because a siddha too invites his or her isht from within to the outside. It's the same bhav of a siddha and sadhak. Hence, yal labdhva siddho bhavati. Having that conviction, you become the Siddh. And then begins the Upasana. Whatever it is that you do with a Dridha Nishche, once your first step, preparation before the first step is firm faith that yes, my Isht exists. My Isht is everywhere. My isht is within me. The form that I worship my isht in. My isht is sarvantaryami, sarvavyapi, sarvashaktishali. And my isht can take any form and come. But I have, I have fallen in love with this form of Paramatma, which could be Divine Mother, Lord Krishna, Shri Hari, Hanumanji, Shri Ram, it could be any form. All the forms emerge from formless. So firmly rooted in that faith that my Isht 
will come. When that preparation happens, hence, before we started the Bhakti series, Narad Rishi proclaimed, he announced, now I will begin the Bhakti series. Because now you have, you have taken the efforts, you have made the efforts to loosen the grip of your mind on your being. You have learned to identify the false self from true self. Now begins the exposition on bhakti. So Narad Rishi talks about Vyasji Maharaj propagating upasana as the means for para bhakti. And we talked about how even before we take up upasana, we need a firm foundation of faith. Because if you have to say para bhakti were to take a form, it can only rest on the platform of faith. So with that firm faith, avahayami, and then happens the rest of the puja. It may need mantras or not need mantras. Mother is not bound by language or rituals. She is only bound by love and sincerity. If you believe with a firm faith that the mother has come, then it is good for you. Mother comes no matter what. It is good on you, good on us that we, we believe that mother has come. And then instead of just performing ritualistic actions, performing ritualish, ritualistic actions in an order. Okay, first I have to do this, then I have to do that. All that disappears. Then sometimes after Ava Hayami, you're like, Mother, you have come. Here, I made this. Why don't you eat this? Then you don't worry about, oh, let me first wash her feet. Let me first do her Abhishek. Oh, then comes the Nevedya. First I have to light the Deepak. All of those sequences have no meaning. Because the place from which the Upasana begins is pure love, firm faith, full Shraddha. And then you start enjoying that Upasana. And that Upasana starts fulfilling us. And now the mother has come from within you. What are you going to do to express your love? Are you going to sing for her? Are you going to do her stuti, her stotra? Are you going to chit chat with her? Are you going to feed her? Are you going to dress her? Are you going to decorate her with flowers? It's up to you. Maybe today you will just do avahayami and just enjoy the company. Puchina. कुछ भी ना कहो क्या कहना है क्या सुनना है तुमको पता है मुझको पता है समय का ये पल थम सा गया है और इस पल में कोई नहीं है बस एक मैं बस एक तुम हो कुछ ना कहो कुछ भी ना कहो All there is is silence there's nothing to say nothing to hear back nothing to complain nothing to ask 
just sitting there enjoying the company of your ishq for however long it is and as swami ji says there are nine types of bhakti some days the divine mother becomes your bestie she becomes your best friend you go out with her you have lunch with her you go shopping with her some days she is just your mother you miss her you miss being in her lap you cry for her you tell her aankh mein choli chhodo ab to man ke vaasi re darshan do ghan shyam nath mori akhiyan pyasi re can you complain mother you're so close when will that day come when will that day come when you will truly come out of this vigraha and talk to me when i can touch you when i can feel you when i can hug you some days you tell her i know mother one day you will come for me you have to because this love that i have lit within my heart is one day going to consume me completely and i know you will come ishq ki dhuni roz jalaye uthta dhua to kaise chupaye मन मस्त मगन मन मस्त मगन बस तेरा नाम दोहराए मन मस्त मगन मन मस्त मगन बस तेरा नाम दोहराए इश्क की धुनी रोज जलाए दैट्स ऑल आई डू मदर लाइट माई हार्ट इन द फायर ऑफ योर लव इट्स गिविंग आउट स्मोक maybe very little right now but there will come a day when my entire being will be on fire and the smoke from that fire of love of your love will make you recognize where i am and you will come and that day mother and these are the conversations you keep having that day when you come how will it be how will i feel you know parabhakti is also day dreaming when you dream about your ishq you say mother the day you will come how will that day be how will i be after i see you what will i say to you aao ge jab tum sajna अंगना फूल खिलेंगे महके का सावन महके का सावन झूम झूम के दो दिल ऐसे मिलेंगे देन यू डे ड्रीम अबाउट दैट डे इवन वाई डे ड्रीमिंग you're in the present moment because you are with the divine mother you are with your ishq so that time that amount of energy that you have conserved to be in your puja room to be in front of your puja to be in front of the divine mother by willfully creating that distance that time 
becomes your time of expressing your love it could have so many ways of expression some days you feed your ishq some day you say mother i'm cooking for you i'll come when i'm done with my cooking and then we'll eat together then while you eat you sing little bit for the mother outside and then again mother with it you're just feeding the mother and then you ask her do you like this do you like that upasana is to sit close so vyas ji maharaj says this is upasana coming from the firm faith dridha nischay a sincere sadhak and sincere only means the one who has dridha nischay makes time conserves energy for this upasana to happen and when upasana happens such then the sadhak looks forward to waking up a little early so he can have this love time with his ishq that's upasana as vyas ji maharaj describes and then no matter what happens in the upasana you may chant the thousand names of the divine mother you call out to her you glorify her then knowing the meaning of each of those thousand names you are filled with goosebumps some names just put you in tears bhagya abdi chandrika bhakta chitta ke ki ghana ghana these are two names of the divine mother from lalita sahasrana bhagya abdi chandrika it means the chit or the antakarn of a bhakt rises like the ocean rises when the ocean sees the full moon similarly a bhakta's chit rises swells up when he or she listens to the glories of his ishq bhagya abdi chandrika bhakt chit ke ki ghana ghana and just like when dark clouds fill the sky a peacock dances bhakt chit similarly the chit of a bhakt a devotee's heart dances in joy when he or she listens to the glories of the divine mother bhagya abdi chandrika bhakt chit ke ki ghana ghana some days you do stutis of the divine mother or your ishq and in that stuti each description of how her hair is how she walks how her sari is how she blesses her devotees your inside starts dancing that joy that love that overfills routine kills bhakti hence nava vidh bhakti is being described after you enter your puja room ask from within mother what should i do today how should i express my bhakti 
should I sing for you today? Should I chant for you today? Should I, should I sing your stutis today? Should I sit in silence today? Preemptively when we decide, it is the mind deciding. Because the mind has the bad habit of thinking about the future. So when at night you decide, oh, tomorrow morning I'm going to do this, this and this, the decision was made by the mind because it was not made kshanik at that moment. Sometimes these decisions can also be made. Sometimes the mind makes these decisions. Something for us to discover. Sometimes the mind makes a decision that tomorrow I'm going to chant. But for some reason, mother's decision is not chanting today. And something else, totally something else happens. So why bother with planning, scheming, what needs to be done? Our job is to show up and do Ava Hayami. And then the mother says, today I'm in the mood for listening to my thousand names from you. Sing. Some days she says, just sit in silence with me. Some days she says, don't you miss me? Aren't you going to cry for me? All these expressions of love. Bhakti gamya, bhakti vashya. Tie her down. Upasana. To enjoy Upasana, we need a little bit of solitude. If, the, if we are surrounded by people, the mind doesn't quieten down. Hence, it won't allow for expressions of Bhakti. Because Bhakti is almost a craze. You look like a crazy cuckoo when you express your bhakti. Because you're sitting in front of your vigraha and you're just smiling, sometimes singing nice Bollywood classics. Sometimes you're kissing the vigraha. You really become a crazy cuckoo. So you need a little bit of privacy. And then you just... No bounds of rituals of steps, of routines. You let bhakti express itself. You let love decide how it would like to express itself. And then every day is a new expression. And then you discover newer and newer expressions of bhakti. Like Swamiji says, there is some bhakti that, ha that follows no rules. You just do it. To sit close is upasana. You decide how you want to sit close. Narad Rishi says, within the bounds of shastras. For us, Shastra is Guru Vakya. Being guided by the Guru from within, expressions of Bhakti will be according to the Shastras. This is the expression, this is the limited description of expression of love expression of bhakti in upasana there are 16 upacharas already 16 ways right there each upchar if you read up on the nayanar stories there are 64 nayanars Almost every, every Nayanar was crazy about one of the Upachar. Maybe this afternoon I will narrate the story of 
the Nayanar who was crazy about agarbattis. Just doing his agarbatti to his isht was his way of expressing his devotion. So there are 16 upachars right there. Anything you can pick up and come up with the most loving way of expressing it. It can only happen with the firm foundation of faith, shraddha, love, dridha nishchay, that yes, my isht comes when I invite, when I invoke. Jagan Mata, Pahima, Pahima, Pahima.